So about six months or so ago, I released this board here, which is the original Scotto Wing Handwired Edition. It has a ton of screws. It's pretty thin. It's kind of a cool video, which I'll link in the top right there if you want to watch it. But what we're going to be doing today is actually moving on with kind of the evolution, what I've been doing with some of my boards to make them more accessible to people who don't want to hand wire, and that's creating PCBs. So we're going to dive in. We're going to be taking a look at the Scotto Wing PCB Edition today. So this here is the Scotto Wing PCB Edition. As you can see, it looks very nice, which we'll talk more about in a second, because first I have to give a massive shout out to my sponsor for this video, JLC PCB. They're who I've actually purchased personally used for the last year or so ever since getting into PCBs. They have really affordable prices, a lot of options, and when they reached out to me saying they wanted to sponsor a video, I was super happy because they're a company, like I said, I personally use. If we look at this PCB here, you can see it's beautiful with these traces here. We have some very nice traces. Everything looks great on it. All the vias there for passing the, the traces from the front to the back. Everything looks nice. The points here, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, why those are like that, but they're very close, but they actually have the proper tolerances to work. So yet again, JLC in the description, if you want to check them out. I love them. They're really good. So with that, let's get into the build now. First thing I'm going to do with this PCB here before we build it is I'm going to actually snap off the six column here because one design decision I made with this that is different from my first ever PCB is that this has a snap off column. So if you want to do a three by six layout, you can leave it on. But if you want to do just a three by five in this section here, you can actually snap that off. And it kind of gives you two different options to build it because not many people actually like three by five. Many people like the three by six because they get their shift key, they get tab, they get like other shift keys and backspace and stuff over here. So the three by five is a little bit more extreme for some people. But for me, I like the three by five layout. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here and you're going to simply just take it and you can snap that off like so. Do it on the other half here. It just breaks right off. And then now that is a three by five PCB. Now, one thing I like to do after I break off those columns is kind of come over here because you can see they're a little bit sharp. So I like to grab a clipper and then I also like to grab like a towel that I could throw away and I'll kind of take it and then just shave it down a little bit. And the reason for the towel here is that this is actually fiberglass, so you don't really want to like let that go everywhere because it could be really bad splinters. You just want to kind of shave those down a little bit. But there we go, and you can see now that that's a little bit smoother over there, a little bit smoother over there. It'll fit better in the case. I'm just going to take these and throw them in my trash can over here so I don't get a splinter from fiberglass. I'm going to put this down, and then now we're going to talk about the diodes. I decided on this board to go with through-hole diodes because on my first ever PCB, I actually went with surface mount diodes, which although makes it really easy in the PCB design phase, it makes it really, really hard when you're actually try to solder them up and especially for like a beginner it's almost impossible for them because they're really really small and just really hard to solder but on this board i went with through hole diodes because what we can do just take one here and you're going to take note of the black line on it so there's a black line on the left side here you're going to take this diode and kind of bend it a little bit and then on your pcb you're going to have these lines on it facing outwards where the diode is going to align with the black line so we just put that in there if i can get it through there just like so We'll pop that in, it will sit flush on there, and you can bend these out to kind of hold it in place, and you'll just solder the diode on there. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through and do all the diodes. So as you can see, we have all the diodes on the board now. On the left, they're facing out towards the left. On the right, they're facing out towards the right. Make sure you get that right when doing that. But what we're gonna do now is put this down and I'm gonna grab one of these right here, which is just a simple little kale hot swap socket. And it's important to keep in mind with this that we want to make sure the orientation is correct. So if I put this on the board here, you can see that there's that hole in the middle there that you want to make sure isn't obstructed because you could take this and put it on upside down like that, and then it'd be obstructed. You'd have to go through and desolder them and fix it, and that's really annoying. So just make sure when you put these on that you get them in the right spot like that. Now, the other thing for these that I will highly recommend is one of these right here, which is a flux-filled applicator pen. I will link this one down in the description below, but basically it's just a flux pen. So what we're gonna do is take the flux, and we're gonna put some on the pad here. We're gonna put some on this pad here. We'll take our socket, put it on there like so, and then we'll take my iron. I'm at 300 degrees Celsius here. I have been for the rest of the video too. Um, maybe a little bit hotter on the diodes, but 300 C will be fine for this. We're gonna take it here. We're gonna put it on and then just simply bring in a little bit of solder and you'll see it kind of flow into there. You can use your finger to hold it down. We'll do that on the other side. Same exact process. And then it's just as simple as that to get a socket on the board. So you can see that's on there now. It's sitting flush with the board. You might want to push it down a little bit while soldering it. But what I'm going to do now is just go through and do all the sockets. So you see now that we have all the hot swap sockets on the board. And what I want to talk about now is the actual sockets for the controller. So the reason you socket a controller, first of all, is that if it ever breaks, you want to easily be able to remove it. So what we're going to do is mount it in the middle here. But first, you might be noticing 
that these holes are quite a bit larger than on the prototype board here. This is a prototype board. They're a lot smaller here. So this is the typical sizing of those header socket holes. But on this one, if I put them side by side, you can kind of see the difference there. Now, the reason I did this is that if we grab the sockets that the kit includes, they have like that weird point on them. So if we have the original sized holes here, if I grab this, and then put these in there. You can see how tall they are, so they sit up, and they also wobble around, making soldering them a little bit annoying. So what I'm gonna do is grab this now and put it into the modified holes here, and you can see that it sits completely flush, perfectly like that, it doesn't wobble around, it keeps a little bit lower. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna solder those on, and then we'll talk about socketing the controller to the sockets here after I solder the sockets onto the board. So as you can see, we now have these sockets in the middle of the board. They're super flush right there, as you can see. And one thing to note is you wanna make sure you don't bridge any of these connections on the back when soldering them. It's pretty easy to do, but if you do, you can kind of just heat it up and pull the solder where you want. But what I'm gonna do with this is take it, put it down here, and I'm gonna grab one controller here first, which is the first option. This is an RP2040 Pro Micro, has 60 megabytes of storage, very good controller, QMK compatible, has vital support for graphical key map changing. Very good option if you wanna go with this one. But what I'm gonna do is actually use the second option we have, which is a nice nano. So this will give us a Bluetooth capability. You don't have a graphical tool like Vile, although you can kind of modify the key map online on a graphical tool. Maybe I'll do a video about that a different day, but we're gonna be using this board because it will give us Bluetooth wireless. And what you wanna do is take it, place it this way on the board, and it is very important to note that on the right half here we have ground ground, you want that to align with ground ground on the board there. And also there is this additional pin up top here where you see the raw right there and then underneath there's the B plus. You want to align it this way. You don't want it kind of down like that. Otherwise it will be aligned improperly. And the thing I'm gonna do before I do anything with socketing is grab this here, which is called Captain Heat Tape. You don't really need this because it's possible to do without it, but I highly recommend this because it will prevent issues with say when you go to solder the pins on here, it won't backflow into the sockets and it'll make it a lot easier to not like bind together. So I'm gonna do is just cut a piece of this really quick so you can see what i did with that i just put it on there and then what we'll do is we'll take this put it on top and then if i didn't mention earlier which i probably put a thing on the screen anyway if i didn't mention it but we wanted to save our diode legs so we're going to take our diode legs and you might notice on some of them there's solder on one end you want to use the side that doesn't have solder and we're just going to use that to kind of poke through the tape and into the socket and then this can be a little bit hard this part but you want to kind of get it through the controller and then socket it into the socket. So push through the tape and then into the socket. Sometimes you might wanna use like a scissor or something to kind of push it down. But there we go, that's in there. You can see that's kind of hanging on. And we're just gonna do that for all of them and then we're just gonna solder it together. Now, another thing important to note with the nice Nano is that we're gonna be soldering this at around 270 to 290 degrees Celsius. If you're using like the RP2040 board here, you don't have to worry too much about temperature. But on this board, they recommend soldering it at a lower temperature because there's a possibility to kind of damage the chip. So I'm gonna do it at like 280, but I'm just gonna put all these pins in, solder them up, and then I'll be back after to show you how to remove the socket the controller because that's when it kind of gets a little bit more tricky. So there's a the controller mounted in the middle of the board now. And at this point, we have to do basically the hardest part of this entire build, which is removing this controller so we can get the tape off underneath and also just checking that we socketed it properly. But what we're gonna do in order to do this is I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna grab two tweezers here. And I'm gonna take note that the USB port here, there's nothing I have to worry about really under there to kind of pry up on it. But on the back here, there could be some chips. So you wanna make sure that you're just kind of going from the very edge of the PCB here and the very edge of the port right there. Now this process takes a very long time to do, so I'm gonna time lapse through it, and I'll be back after I get it loose enough I can show you how to pop it out. So I'm just gonna go back and forth, kind of levering this up from both edges, and I'll be back after that. So you can kind of see now that I have the top of the controller a little bit loose here. So what I'm gonna do is put this down, and I'm just gonna kind of try to not bend these pins and pull it out a little bit more. So I'm gonna lever this way, And then eventually you should get enough clearance that you can just kind of lift it out like that. And then there is our socketed controller. So you can see the diode legs right there. It sits on there. We can take this tape off now. And at this point, it's gonna depend on which board you're building this with. So if you're building this with the RP2040 wired board here, you're gonna to wanna to skip ahead to the firmware section because you're not gonna have easy access to the buttons underneath to reset it to flash to firmware later. But since we're building this with a nice Nano, we're gonna actually just take this and pop it back on here. So all you do is put it in the sockets 
and then push right down and then that is our controller socketed and at this point we have to do some stuff that's specific only to the nice nano build so that is a reset button a battery connector and then a power switch up here So all this stuff is on the board now for the nice nano. We have a reset button. We have our power switch right here. Then we have this little dangling wire. Now, the reason I went with a wire instead of just mounting the pH connector to the board is that this board's going to be sold internationally. So I don't know where people are going to be able to source their batteries from. So I didn't want to lock them into a battery that says has to be mounted right here and then mounted right there. This gives them flexibility that they can put the battery basically anywhere they want. So with that said, I'm going to be using this battery here, which is a 750 milliamp hour battery that I get from Typer Active. This is what I normally use in all my boards. Give me about six months or so on a single single charge so really nice battery there but we take this you want to make sure that your red is actually lining up with red because not all batteries are standardized but most of them should be proper but as long as that's right you can plug this in here and what we'll be able to do is kind of look up top if you look underneath the board here we can flip this power switch and you'll see the blue light come on if we turn that off it will turn the board off that means we have power so we can actually start assembling the board so i'm just going to take this and put it down for now and then i'm going to grab the case over here so we have the 3d printed case bottom here in the 3x5 variant this is also available like i said in the 3x6 if you wanted that and then we also have a plate here now the plate itself is actually screwless so there's no screws in here because we're going to mount to the pcb so there's no easy access so what we're going to actually do is we have to get the standoffs onto the pcb first <laughs> So you can see that all the standoffs are in the board now. And the next step that I have to do is just get the switches in before we assemble the board. And I'm just gonna be using some knockoff Holy Pandas here, which I actually kind of enjoy. They're really cheap, but they feel pretty good. But I'm gonna be popping these in. I'm gonna be using the plate here. Wanna make sure you're like pulling the plate in places and make sure that they sit flush. But other than that, I'm gonna go through and put the switches in now. So there are all the switches in the board. Looks really good. Everything's pulled in kind of equal where it should be. Just make sure you pull that plate to get everything right. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab the case here. I'm gonna grab my battery. I'm gonna kind of mount the battery right here and then route it to the cable. And then I'm gonna also use these, which are just some little quarter ounce weights. I'm gonna put a ton of these in the board to kind of make it heavier just because I can. There's no real reason for this, but I'm gonna put these all over the board. I'll be back after that. So there's the board assembled in the case. You can see the back there, we have our little power switch. We have our USB cutout with a bunch of clearance around it so you can actually get a USB plug in there. Cause if you're not aware on a nice nano, you can actually use them wired too. So if you want to like game with it and get like normal latency of a normal keyboard, you can just plug it in with that USB port and get full capability. That's also how you charge it there too. But then we have our power switch. We have all our switches in there. Really low profile, looks really cool. At this point, the final thing we have to do is put the keycaps on it. And for that, I'm gonna be using my Scotto caps scooped, which are available on the repo if you wanna print them yourself for free. But basically these are just some black PLA 3D printed keycaps right there. I'm gonna go through, put those on the board. So there is the completed board. I think it looks really good. I like the spiderweb design in the middle. The keycaps though are really nice. We have the homing bump here. We have the little rounded part there. And I think these are one of my favorite things I've ever actually designed. But I basically never have to buy keycaps and they're they're really nice. They're low profile, they, they work great. But what I wanna show next is actually how to get the firmware on it. So let's jump into the computer and take a look. So here we are on the blog post for the board over on my website. This is a three by six variant, which I'll show later towards the end of this video, just to kind of compare between the three by five and three by six. But if we scroll down here on my website to where it says firmware, you're gonna to come to these five files. So the first two are for QMK. So if you built it with this board right here, these are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use. But if you built it with a nice nano like I did, you're gonna have cold Colmac.uf2 and QWERTY.uf2. The only difference being one's in QWERTY, one's in Colmac. So I'm going to just download this and then I'm going to reveal it over in my finder here. And you're going to have the file here. So what we have to do now is actually get the board into bootloader mode. On the RP2040, you're going to want to hold this button while you plug it into the computer. That will get into bootloader mode. But since we built this with a nice nano, we can actually just take the board. We're going to plug it in on the USB-C here and then we're going to flip it over and we're going to quickly press the reset button twice. I'm going to actually use my nice titanium switch puller here. I always love flexing this thing because it's, it's really cool. It's titanium, kind of expensive, but really cool. I'll link that down below if you want one. But what we're going to do is just double click this and you're going to see it pop up as the nice nano here. And then what you will do is just take the colmac.uf2 and drop it into this folder. I'm not going to do that because I've already flashes of my firmware. I don't want to do it again. So just to get out of bootloader mode, I'm going to simply pull this cable and then pop it back in and this will just reset the board. And if we click here, you'll see that we now have a board that actually types. So now what we have to do, of course, since this is a keyboard video, we're gonna do a typing test on this. I think it feels pretty good with these knockoff Holy Pandas. I've actually been really impressed with knockoff Holy Pandas, but we're gonna go type on it and then we'll have some final words on it and that's the entire build. So let's go type.
So I think that sounds pretty good and it might have something to do with the weights. I'm not too sure, but it does sound good. It feels really good to type on. I really do like these knockoff holy pandas. They're pretty good, but this is the board here. This is the three by five layout. It's really hefty because of those weights. I think it looks really nice. I'm happy with how it turned out. This is the other option you have the three by six layout. If you wanted to build this one, this is the wired version. This one's wireless with a nice nano. And then finally to tie everything together, this is the original hand wired edition three by five, which the hand wired, if you're not aware, does come in a three by six too, because you could print that and do a three by six hand wired if you wanted to. But those are the three of them there. If I can kind of get them all on camera here, all of them there. Now, before we end this video, I do have to give a massive shout out to my sponsor yet again, JLC PCB. Massive shout out for them sending me the PCBs as well, sponsoring the video. Um, like I said, they are a company that I've used in the past. So when they reached out saying they want to sponsor me, I was very happy with that because I, I like their stuff. They're very affordable. They have good quality stuff. I'll link them down below, which I believe there are coupons tied with that. And they put my promo code as the handwiring guy, which is pretty cool. But with all that said, hope you guys enjoy this video. Like, comment, subscribe as usual, and I will see you next time.